Well, good evening. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Face to Face Conversations with God. We are going to be reading the book of Mark today. So get ready to be ignited with fire. That's why I'm playing Jesus Culture, Set a Fire. We want Holy Spirit to set a fire down in our soul that we cannot contain nor can we control it. But we want to be set ablaze in the glory of Jesus Christ. The book of Mark talks about the supernatural works of Jesus. Now, we know we've already read a lot of these same scriptures in the book of Matthew. And Matthew, John, and Luke pretty much... I'm sorry, Matthew, uh, Mark, and Luke pretty much repeated the same things over uh, each, repeated the same things. But how many of you know that three people can see an event, but they see it from different perspectives? And the way Mark wrote it is he wrote about the supernatural works of Jesus. So there's words that we're going to listen to and we're going to hear over and over. Words like immediately and suddenly. That doesn't mean in a few minutes. That doesn't mean nine years down the road. It means immediately. It means suddenly. There was another word that Holy Spirit kept popping up in my mind. Oh, and Jesus always made time to pray. We want to walk in the authority of God. We want to walk in the power of God. You have got to set aside time for more prayer. You know, sometimes we think um, we can just read the word and poof, it happens. Well, yeah, but if you want to walk in the authority and the power that Jesus left us, you got to spend time in prayer. Jesus spent much time in prayer talking to the Father, asking the Father. You know, we don't know what they talked about, but he spent a lot of time in the face of God. So that's the same thing that we have to do. So if your prayer time is five minutes, let's increase it to ten. If your prayer time is 15 minutes, let's increase it to ten. I mean to uh to, to 20. Let's begin to increase it. And that includes me. We all can increase our time with God. But I find that all throughout the day, I'm praying. Um, I'm praying while I'm at work. I'm praying while I'm serving passengers. I'm praying while I'm in the back galley getting stuff ready for the flight. I'm consistently praying. So your life begins to be a prayer. And that's what we want. We want our life to become a prayer. We want our life to become revived. It's a little loud. All right, let me turn that down a little bit. We want our life to become revived in the acts of Jesus Christ. So Holy Spirit, we come yielding ourselves to you today as we get ready to read the book of Mark. I thank you that you're igniting revival in our soul. You're reviving us as we read the, the book of Mark. Thank you, Lord God, that the, the words on the page are going to leap in our soul. We're going to leap, hallelujah, and just begin to do the works that you called us to do. This book has special meaning to me because this is the book. Well, I'm getting way ahead of myself. When we get there, I'll tell you the whole story of what God did while I was um, out with a friend. And we came across a man that came out of absolutely nowhere. And when we turned around and looked, he had gone back to absolutely nowhere. I mean, we, we can't even tell you where he went to. But he told us to read a scripture. Or not a scripture. It was a series of verses. And after he read it, he said, do you understand? And when we said yes, he walked away. So let me tell you, you are going to be ignited. If you take this book and you devour it and you let God revive you, I'm telling you, revival is going to hit your life and you will never, ever be the same. No longer will it just be words in a book, but this book comes alive in your spirit. All right. So we're getting ready to read the book of Mark. Let's see. What else did I find out about the book of Mark? Uh, 
let me see. Oh yeah, I kind of went over it. Uh, it's, it's what I really wanted to bring out is that Mark is the book of the acts of Jesus. All right. Ooh, let me clean my glasses. So thank you. You know, I know I'm on late today, y'all, but let me tell you something. You have no idea how hard I have been trying to sit down at this table, at this desk, so that I can do our reading today. I lost all of my typed word. I had to go back out there and recreate that. I was going to try to do it in another format. That wasn't working. I mean, just all kinds of little crazy stuff. So I said, okay, Lord, you get ready to do something with us, aren't you? So, you know, we just move on in the Lord and uh, thank him for his blessings of being alive and, and being... Um, here to read this word on today. So I want to thank you all. Thank hello to our new uh, um, uh, listeners. We've got new people coming on from Kuwait City, I believe it was. We've got people coming on from Kenya. We've got people coming on from Nigeria. And we have people coming on from India. And we have people coming on from the United States. So God is expanding the borders. And I am ecstatic about what God is doing in your life as we read the word of God together. I do realize that a lot of you may not have a, a physical Bible with you. Some of you are driving home. Some of you are at work. So that's why we want to make sure we stay as close to the scripture, not even as close. We want to stay on the scripture so that you can get this word written on the tables of your heart. Um, we have read so many books of the Bible. I am... It, the list has gotten too long for me to go back and 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 um, remember all the books that we've read. But I think we've read about 13 or 14 books of the Bible. We Somewhere around there. I know it's more than... Um, sorry, I can't figure out where I want this fan to be blowing. It's kind of cool outside. I had the air conditioner going and it was way too much. So, um, I know I just give y'all all my little life going on. I'm so sorry, but I include you in my little world. Uh, so thank you all. Uh, but I tell you what, let me tell you, if you have not had the opportunity to watch the show that we did on Friday with our guest, Paula Morley, I would ask you to go back and re, uh, 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 uh hit the on demand button and listen to the replay of that particular book. The book of Jonah is probably the only book that I know that every single person can truly identify with. Jonah, <laughs> Jonah is us. God will ask us to do a thing <clears throat> and we're like, no, God, no, I can't do that. We have all kind of excuses as to why we don't want to do what God is asking us to do. And we'll run from God. And I mean, we run hard. Just like Jonah, <clears throat> we'll pay to get away from God. We'll go drink ourselves away so we can get away from God. We'll go pop pills so we don't have to hear the word of God or the voice of God. We'll do whatever it takes so that we don't have to listen and do what God tells, tells us to do. But what we don't recognize <laughs> is that God provides even in our sin. God provided for Jonah, even in his sin. When they threw him over in the boat, the sea couldn't kill him because God said, no, I told you to do something and you're going to do it. <laughs> so God provided a well. What well did God provide for you? What is it that he's provided for you and yet you're still running? So just know when it's all said and done, you are going to have to go ahead and do the will of God. You're, you're answering to him. He called you. He set you here for a purpose. And he wants you to do his will here in the earth. Because just like Jonah, Jonah, Jonah's disobedience was going to hinder 120,000 people from being transformed, from being saved, from not being destroyed. 120,000 people. If Jonah, are we Jonah? How many people are we not reaching? How many people are we not encouraging? 
Come on. So let's go back, go listen to it, and then listen to how transparent Paula was in um, how God was dealing with her in the book of Jonah. And you will see how many times, I, I can't even count the number of times a day when God will ask me to do something. I'm like, but God, oh, but God, you know how we do. I don't, I'm not equipped. God, I'm not educated. God, I'm not as eloquent as that other person. I don't have all the tools. And God said, if I told you to do something, I provided for it. So go and listen to it. It's going to really bless your soul. All right. So we're going to get started with the book of John. Excuse me. I'm trying to um, unstop my nose here. Um, as soon as I sat down, it did its thing. So at any rate... We are going to uh, go ahead and read the book of Mark. All right, here we go. The preaching of John the Baptist. The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the son of God, as it is written in the prophets, behold, I send my messenger. I send my messenger before thy face which shall prepare thy way before thee. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm reading from the King James today. I was going to read from the Message Bible, but what I do is I read it, and if I don't feel it in my spirit, like this is the one that God wants me to read from, then I don't. And I kept hearing some things that were left out in the Message Bible that were very vital to me that needs to be said, so I'm going to read it from the King James. Okay, the uh, verse three, Mark chapter one, verse three, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John did baptize in the wilderness and preached the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. And there went unto him all of the land of Judah and they of Jerusalem and were all baptized of him in the river of Jordan, confessing their sins. I'm just holding off because I just feel, I'm not sure if I want to. It's very important that you confess your sins. If you don't have a team of people, and when I say team, I'm not talking you have to have 20, 30, 40 people around you. Ask Holy Spirit. You know, we went over this in our prayer meeting um, at uh, the church that I attend uh, over this. Ask God to send you covenant friends. That's so important that you have someone that you can... Um, that's there to say, hey, you know, the way you're acting is kind of off track. And then you can confess that thing to God and go, God, you know, I didn't really even realize I was acting like that. But all throughout the Bible, you will hear that God says to speak it out of your mouth. Confess your sins. All right. If in some chapters it says confess your sins to one another so that the sins may be blotted out. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Yeah, I kind of chopped that one up, but you know what I'm saying. But confession is so important. When you speak to God, confess the sins that you have done. Just confess them. All right? See, that's popping out of the page, so I know that there's something that God wants to, to hit on. And I pray that I've, I've hit on it the way he wants me to hit on it. But just make sure that you are confessing your sins. All right? I know I keep drinking a lot of tea, y'all, but I'm just trying to get my sinuses to open back up so I don't sound stopped up. Verse 6. And John, John was clothed with camel's hair and with a girdle of a skin about his loins. And he did locusts, he did eat locusts and wild honey. Ooh-wee. I'm so glad, Jesus, 
that I don't have to go that route because I don't like bugs. That would be very difficult for me. Verse 7, and preached saying, there cometh one mightier than I after me, the latchet of whose shoes I am not worthy to stoop down and unloose. Verse 8, I indeed baptize you with water, but he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. Father, we come humbly before you, before you. And we ask that you would baptize us afresh with the Holy Ghost and, a, and with the fire of God. Glory to your name, Jesus. Glory. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Verse 9, Jesus is baptized. Jesus is baptized. We must be baptized. All right? Father, baptize us afresh with the Holy Ghost and with fire. And it came to pass in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized of John in the Jordan. And straightway, coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens opened and the spirit like a dove descending upon him. And there came a voice from heaven saying, Thou art my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Jesus is tempted by the devil. Verse 12. And immediately the spirit driveth him into the wilderness. Now here's what you have to understand. It is spirit, capital S. So that means the spirit of God drove him into the wilderness. And he was there in the wilderness 40 days, tempted of Satan and was with the wild beasts and the angels ministered unto him. Now, when I read this, this is what God, uh, 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 impression upon my spirit. When you are in a wilderness situation and Satan and his hell, hellhounds are after you, the wild beasts are surrounding you. God's angels will minister life unto you. You're not out there by yourself in that wilderness place. God's angels will minister the word of God, the word of life to you. All right. Jesus begins his ministry in Galilee. Verse 14. Now after that, John was put in prison. Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. John's work had been accomplished. Now the glory of Jesus was to be revealed. And Jesus was saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. Are you believing the gospel? Eat this word and believe it. It's not like those books that I have over there that some famous writer wrote. These are words that give you life, glory. And listen, verse 15, it says, Jesus repeated what John had been saying. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. The message has not changed. It's not going to change. When we transition on, if God has not come back for the church, the message will still be the same. Repent and be baptized. Believe in the word of the Lord. All right? The message is not going to change. Jesus calls four fishermen. Verse 16. Now, as he walked by the Sea of Galilee... He saw Simon and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. And Jesus said unto them, Come ye after me, and I will uh, come and come ye after me, and I will make you to be fishers of men. 
and straightway they forsook their nets and followed him. And when he had gone a little further thence, he saw James the son of Zebedee and John his brother, who also were in the ship mending their nets. And straightway he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the ship with the hired servants and went after him. The man with an unclean spirit. Mark 1, 21. And for those that are just joining us, thank you so much for joining us on Face to Face Conversations with God. My name is Chantel and I welcome you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to all my replay uh, viewers. Welcome. Let me know that you're on watching. Those that see the replay, hit the share button. Share it with your friends. Share it with your families. We are reading the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. And I welcome you all on Mark 1 and 21. And they went into Capernaum and straightway on the Sabbath day, he entered into the synagogue and taught. And they were astonished at his doctrine. For he taught them as one that had authority and not as the scribes. Now, the scribes were the readers of legal papers. They explained the law. They were supposed to be acquainted <laughs> with the interpreters uh, uh, of God's saving purpose. But during this time, during the time of Jesus, they opposed his sayings, Jesus, and they opposed his saving purpose. They opposed the word of God because Jesus was the living word. Excuse me. They opposed the word of God. I'm, I'm amazed that those that were reading the word, those that were delivering the word, did not see the word in action. They did. They were reading about Jesus. <laughs> but their eyes were blinded. Eyes open, but yet they were blinded. And they couldn't see Jesus for who he is. And there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit. And he cried out saying, let us alone. With what have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee, who thou art, the Holy One of God. Now, when I read that, I said, wait a minute, hold up. The demons knew who Jesus was, but the, pe <laughs> the people that are reading about Jesus knew not who he was. Jesus, let that sink in for a minute. My God, don't be one who just goes to church and you still don't know who Jesus is. Don't be one who cracks open this Bible and you still don't know who Jesus is. Father, I pray that everybody that you have stop and listen today. Everybody that you have stopped and listened as we read the book of Mark in the days to come. I thank you, Holy Father, that you are opening up eyes. You are unstopping ears. And people will begin to see Jesus in the fullness of his glory, in the fullness of his power. And the fact that he left us resurrection power to walk in. The same power that Jesus operated in. He says, I give this power unto you. You the reader. You the hearer. You the one that has accepted Christ. I give this same power unto you. Walk in it. Verse 25. And Jesus rebuked him saying, hold thy peace. Come out of him. And when the unclean spirit had torn him and cried with a loud voice, he came out of him. And they were all amazed in so much that they questioned among themselves saying, what thing is this? What new doctrine is this? For with authority commanded he even the unclean spirits and they do obey him. 
and immediately his fame spread abroad throughout all the region round about Galilee. Jesus. Jesus was first known for walking in authority in the word. God, give us that authority. Let us see. Forgive me, Holy Spirit. Let us see that you have given us that authority to walk in the power of the word. Casting out demons. Yes, we can still cast out demons today. Jesus heals many. Uh, Mark 1, 29. And forthwith, when they were come out of the synagogue, they entered into the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. But Simon's wife's mother lay sick of a fever. And they told him, they quickly told him, Anon means they, they quickly told him of her. And he came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. And what does it say? Immediately the fever left her and she ministered unto him. Immediately she was healed. And at even when the sun did set, they brought unto him all that were diseased and then that were possessed with devils. They were demonized. They were demon controlled. And all the city was gathered together at the door. And they and he healed many that were sick of divers diseases and cast out many devils and suffered not the devils to speak because they knew him. Jesus. Jesus ministers in all of Galilee. Verse 35. And in the morning, rising up a great while before day, he went out and departed until a solitary place and there prayed. Holy One, cause us to get up even when we don't want to and go into a solitary place and pray. Cause us to seek you before we go to sleep and pray. Cause us in the noonday hour, sometime in the afternoon, to come before you to steal away. Even if you have to steal away and go to the, to the ladies' room or the men's room and steal away and pray for five minutes. Pray and seek his face. Ask him to pour out of his spirit into you. Ask him to baptize you every day afresh with Holy Ghost and with the fire. Thank you, Lord God, for suddenlies and immediatelys in our life. Because we're, we're reading this word and we're now getting ready to apply it to our life. And we're going to walk out this word. Thank you, dear Lord. Hallelujah. Glory, God. Glory. The verse 36. And Simon and they that were with him followed after him. And when they had found him, they said unto him, All men seek for thee, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory, God. Verse 38. And he said unto them, Let us go into the next towns that I may preach there also for therefore came I forth. Jesus came forth to preach the word of God. Hallelujah. So already what has Jesus done? He has defeated the devil when he went into the wilderness. He has spoken in authority in the synagogue and he has already healed Simon's mother. So God was showing his authority through Jesus Christ all before their eyes. God is showing us his authority in Jesus Christ right before our eyes. Jesus. 
verse 39. And he preached in their synagogues throughout all Galilee and cast out devils. Action words. We are still to cast out devils. People are walking around demonized and it needs to be cast out. So God, I thank you that you remove the spirit of fear from your people. And I thank you, Lord God, that they are rising up in the strength and in the power hallelujah, of your word. And we are walking out your word, Lord God. Thank you for it, Father. Thank you for how you're igniting us with fire. You're reviving us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. With the acts of Jesus, you are reviving us. Thank you, Lord God. Jesus cleanses a leper. Mark 1 and 40. And there came a leper to him beseeching him and kneeling down to him and saying unto him, if thou wilt, thou can make me clean. And Jesus moved with compassion, put forth his hand and touched him and said unto him, I will be thou clean. Whatever disease is in your body, Jesus is saying, I will that you be healed. I will that you be clean. Glory, God. And as soon as he had spoken, immediately the leprosy departed from him and he was cleansed. And he straightly charged him and forthwith sent him away and said unto him, See thou, saith nothing to any man, but go thy way, show thyself to the priest, And offer for thy cleansing those things which Moses commanded for a testimony unto them. Verse 45. But he went out and began to publish it much and to blaze abroad. (laughs) The matter in so much that Jesus could no more openly enter into the city, but was without in the desert places. And they came to him from every quarter. Chapter 2, Jesus heals a crippled man. And again, he entered into Capernaum after some days, and it was noise that he was in the house. And straightway, many were gathered together, insomuch that there was no room to receive him, no, not so much as about the door. And he preached the word unto them. And they came unto him, bringing one sick of the palsy, which was born of four. And when they could not come nigh unto him for the press, they uncovered the roof where he was. And when they had broken it up, they let down the bed wherein the sick of palsy lay. When Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee, Jesus. But there were certain of the scribes sitting there and reasoning in their hearts, why doeth this man thus speak blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God only? Verse 8, and immediately, and immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they so reasoned within themselves, he said unto them, Why reason ye these things in your hearts? Whether is it easier to say to the sick of palsy, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Arise and take up thy bed and walk. But that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins, he said to the sick of palsy, I say unto thee, Arise, and take up thy bed, and go thy way into the house. And what? Immediately he rose, took up his bed, and went forth before them all, insomuch that they were amazed, and glorified God, saying, We never saw it on this fashion. My God. Mark 13. I'm sorry, Mark 2, 13. Jesus calls Levi. 
And he went forth again by the seaside, and all the multitude resorted unto him, and he taught them. And as he passed by, he saw Levi, the son of Alphaeus, sitting at the receipt of customs. And he said unto him, Follow me. And he arose and followed him. And it came to pass that as Jesus sat at meat in his house, many publicans and sinners sat also together with Jesus and his disciples, for there were many, and they followed him. And when the scribes and the Pharisees saw him eat with publicans and sinners, I mean, they were toe up. They said unto his disciples, How is it that he eateth and drinketh with publicans and sinners? Now, <laughs> the religious will always find fault in whatever it is you're doing, whether you are eating with just scribes and Pharisees, leaders, people in the know, people in the church, or whether you sit down with those that are not in the church, scribes and Pharisees, religious people will always have something to say about what you're doing. But I say to you, just do what God told you to do and don't be bothered with what anything else anybody else has to say, all right? Ha, huh, God, glory. Anyway, so he says, um, <laughs> how is it that he eateth and drinketh with publicans and sinners? Verse 17. When Jesus heard it, he said unto them, They that are whole have no need of physician, but they that are sick, I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. How are the people in the world going to see who Jesus is except you sit down and eat with them? If the only people that you talk to all the time are people that already know the word, how is your cup being emptied? Come on. All right. Jesus teaching on fasting. Mark 2 verse 18. And the disciples of John and of the Pharisees used to fast. And they came and say unto him, Why do the disciples of John and of the Pharisees fast? But thy disciples fast not. And Jesus said unto them, Can the children of the bride chamber fast while the bridegroom is with them? As long as they have the bridegroom with them, they cannot fast. But the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken away from them, and they, and then shall they fast in those days. No man also soweth a piece of new cloth on an old garment, else the new piece that filled it up. Oh, uh, uh, else the new piece that filled it up taketh away from the old, and the rent is made worse. The tear is made worse. And no man putteth new wine into old bottles, else the new wine doeth burst the bottles, and the wine is spilled, and the bottles will be marred. But new wine must be put into new bottles. Glory, God. Hallelujah. Jesus is Lord over the Sabbath day, Mark 2 and 23. And it came to pass that he went through the cornfields on the Sabbath day. And his disciples began as they went to pluck the ears of corn. <laughs> and the Pharisees said unto him, Behold, why do they on the Sabbath day do that which is not lawful? <laughs> And he said unto them, Have you never read what David did? When he had need and was hungry, he and they that were with him, how he went into the house of God in the days of Abathar, the high priest, and did eat the shoe bread, which is not lawful to eat but for the priest, and gave also to them that were with him. Verse 27. And they said unto him, The Sabbath was made for man, and not the man made for Sabbath. Therefore, the Son of Man is Lord also of the Sabbath. They were talking to Jesus. Ah! Oh my gosh. My gosh, my gosh. There's so much meat in here. 
Oh gosh. If I started breaking down everything, we'd be here for hours. All right. Verse three, Jesus heals a man on the Sabbath day. And he entered again into the synagogue, and there was a man there which had a withered hand. And they watched him, whether he would heal him on the Sabbath day, that they might accuse him. Somebody's watching you. Are you going to follow the word of God? Or are we going to cower back and go, well, I don't know. But see, Jesus knew he had a mission. He was on a mission to heal, to save to preach the gospel. And he said unto the man which had the withered hand, stand forth. And he said unto, unto him, is it lawful to do good on the Sabbath days or to do evil, to save life or to kill? But they held their peace. And when he had looked around on about them with anger, being grieved for their hardness of their hearts, he said unto the man, Stretch forth thine hand. And he stretched it out, and his hand was restored whole as the other. And the Pharisees went forth and straightway took counsel with Herodians against him, how they might destroy him. So now they're plotting. A multitude follows Jesus by the sea. Mark 3 and 7. But Jesus withdrew himself with his disciples to the sea. And a great multitude from Galilee followed him from Judea. I'm sorry, followed him and from Judea. And from Jerusalem and from um, Adunami. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, that city. And from beyond Jordan. And they about Tyre and Sidon, a great multitude, when they had heard what great things he had done, came unto him. Now this is that same Tyre and Sidon that we had talked about, I believe it was in Ezekiel. So these cities are still flourishing. And he spake to the disciples that a small ship should wait on him because of the multitude, lest they should throng him. For he had healed many insomuch that they had pressed upon him for to touch him as many as had plagues and unclean spirits. When they saw him, fell down before him and cried out, Thou art son of God. Thou art the son of God. All these people with demons and unclean spirits the unclean spirits recognize Jesus. But we here on the earth so many times do not recognize Jesus when he's moving amongst us. When he's moving through somebody, laying hands on. It's not the person, it's the power of God through the person. And he straightly charged them that they should not make him known. Jesus chooses 12 apostles, Mark 3 and 13. And he goes, goeth up into a mountain and calleth unto him who he would, and they came unto him. And he ordained 12 that should be with him and that he might send them forth to preach and to have power to heal sicknesses and to cast out devils. And Simon, his surname Peter, and James, the son of Zebedee, and John, the brother of James, and he surnamed them Barjernus, which is the sons of thunder, and Andrew and Philip and Bartholomew and Matthew and Thomas and James, the son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus and Simon the Canaanite and Judas Iscariot, which also betrayed him. And they went into a house. Jesus and Beelzebub. Mark 3 and 20. And the multitude coming together again, so that they could not so much as eat bread. And when his friends heard of it, they went out to lay hold on him, for they said, He is beside himself. 
And the scribes which came down from Jerusalem said, He hath bells above. And by the prince of devils, devils, he cast out devils. And he called them unto him and said unto them in a parable, How can Satan cast out Satan? So when you see someone casting out a devil and you see that person rising up and being free, God is saying, how can Satan cast out Satan? You see somebody being healed, God is saying, how can Satan cast out Satan? And if the kingdom of, uh, be divided against this, uh, itself, that kingdom cannot stand. Verse 25, and if a house be divided against itself, that house cannot stand. And if Satan rise up against himself and be divided, he cannot stand, but hath an end. No man can enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods, except he first bind the strong man and then he will spoil the house. Verily I say unto you, all sins shall be forgiven unto the sons of men, and blasphemies wherewith soever they shall blaspheme. But he that shall blaspheme against the Holy Ghost hath never forgiveness, but is in danger of eternal damnation, because they said he hath an unclean spirit. So Jesus is saying, when you're saying, that when someone is doing something by the power of Holy Spirit and they are setting another soul free, they are casting demons out of another soul through the power of Holy Spirit. You are blaspheming against Holy Spirit. If you don't understand it, ask God to open up your understanding. All right? Jesus' mother and brothers, Mark 3 and 31. There came then his brethren and his mother, and standing without, sent unto him, calling him. And the multitude sat about him, and they said unto him, Behold, thy mother and thy brethren without seek for thee. And he answered them, saying, Who is my mother? Or who are my brethren? And he looked round about on them which sat about him, and said, Behold, my mother and my brethren, for whosoever shall do the will of God, the same is my, my brother and my sister and my mother. If you are doing the will of God, you are God's brother if you are a man, his sister if you are a woman, and his mother. If you're doing the will of God. Chapter 4, the uh, parable of the sower. And he began again to teach by the seaside. And there was gathered unto him a great multitude, so that he entered into a ship and sat in the sea. And the whole multitude was by the sea on the land. And he taught them many things by parables and said unto them in his doctrine, Hearken, behold, there went out a sower to sow. It, and it came to pass, as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and the fowls of the air came and devoured it up. And some fell on stony ground, wherein, where it had not much earth, and immediately it sprang up, because it had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, it was scorched, and because it had no root, it withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no fruit. And other fell on good ground and did yield fruit that sprang up and increased and brought forth some thirty and some sixty and some a hundred. And he said unto them, He that hath ears, let him hear. Father, open our ears so that we may hear, so that we... That, that your seed falls on good ground and it springs up in us and it yields an increase and we bring forth some 30, some 60, 
and some a hundred. We thank you for that, Father. Why Jesus taught in parables, Mark 4 and 10. And when he was alone, they were about with him, with the twelve ask of him the parable. And he said unto them, Unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. But unto them that are without, all these things are done in parables. That seeing, that seeing they may see, not. Perceive. I'm sorry, let me read that again. That seeing they may see and not perceive. And hearing they may hear and not understand. Lest at any time they shall be converted and their sins should be forgiven them. It's very difficult for you to understand the gospel of Jesus Christ without being converted first and your sins being forgiven you. So if that's what's blocking you, Jesus is telling you right here, when you want to hear and you want to see, you should what be what? Converted, which means accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Confess your sins <laughs> so that it can be forgiven. And your eyes will open and your ears will unblock. And you'll be able to perceive what Jesus is saying in his parables. All right? Mark 4 and 13. Explanation of the parable of the sower. And he said unto them, No, no means understand. Ye not this parable? And how then will ye know all parables? The sower soweth the word. And these are they by the way side. I'm sorry, I don't know why I'm reading like this today. And these are they by the wayside, where the word is sown. But when they have heard, Satan comes immediately and taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts. And these are they likewise which are sown on stony ground, who when they have heard the word, immediately receive it with gladness, and have no root in themselves, and so endure but for a time. Afterward, when affliction or persecution ariseth for the word's sake, immediately they are offended and they stumble. Verse 18, and these are they which are sown among thorns, such as hear the word and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the lust of other things, desires of other things, entering in, choke the word and it becometh unfruitful. The word becomes unfruitful to them. Verse 20, and these are they which are sown on good ground, such as hear the word and receive it and bring forth fruit, some thirtyfold, some sixty, and some a hundred. A light under a bushel, Mark 4 and 21. And he said unto them, Is a candle brought to be put under a bushel or under a bed? and not to be set on a candlestick? For there is nothing hid which shall not be manifested, neither was anything kept secret, but that it should come abroad, come to light. If any man have ear, ears to hear, let him hear. And he said unto them, Take heed what you hear, with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you. And unto you that hear shall more be given. Jesus. For he that hath, to him shall be given. And he that hath not, from him shall be taken even that which he has. That is the result of not listening. Not listening to the word. What you have, it will be taken from you and given to those that hear. Jesus. Mark 4 and 26. The parable of the growth of the seed. 
And he said, So is the kingdom of God as if a man should cast seed into the ground and should sleep and rise night and day and the seed should spring up and grow. He knoweth not how. For the earth bringeth forth fruit of herself, first the blade, then the ear, and after that, the full corn in the ear. But when the fruit is brought forth immediately, he putteth it in the sickle, because the harvest is come. Jesus. The parable of the mustard seed, Mark, 20, uh, Mark 4 and 30. And he said, Whereunto shall we liken the kingdom of God? Or with what comparison shall we compare it with? It's like a grain of mustard seed, which when it is sown in the earth is the least of all the seeds that be in the earth. It's the smallest of all the seeds that be in the earth. But when it is sown, it groweth up and becometh greater than all the herbs and shooteth out great branches so that the fowl of the air may lodge under the shadow of it. Wow. Mark 4 and 33, Jesus' use of parables. And with many such parables spake he the word unto them as they were able to hear it. But without a parable spake he not unto them. And when they were alone, he expounded on all things to his disciples. Mark 4 and 35, Jesus calms the storm. And that same day, when the evening was come, he said unto them, let's pass over to the other side. Verse 36. And when they had sent to, excuse me, sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship. And there were also with them, with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind and the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. <laughs> and he was in the hinder parts of the ship asleep on a pillow. And they awake him and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? Verse 39. And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said, what, what, said one to another, What manner of man is this that even the wind and the sea obey him whatever storm you go through in life no matter how the waves are coming up against you Jesus is with you and he is saying peace be still in the midst of any storm you go through so father we thank you for the reading of your word we thank you for how you are reviving us. We thank you for the seed of your word. That it is falling on good ground. And we are going to bring forth an increase. Some 30, some 60, and some 100 fold. Hallelujah. Bearing the seed of your word. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord God, for how you're establishing the acts of Jesus. And you're causing our eyes to be open. You're causing our ears to be open. You're causing us to be strengthened with your word. We thank you for it, Father. We thank you for how you are going to minister these four chapters to us. You're going to highlight things in our spirit. You're awakening us, Lord God. You're causing us to wake up and to walk in the power of your word. For Jesus said 
the same power that he has, he gives it unto us. So we thank you for the immediately's. We thank you for the suddenly's. We thank you for eyes being open. We thank you for ears being open. We thank you for demons being cast out. We thank you for sicknesses being healed. We thank you that you're 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 lighting, you're you're putting us as a light in this dark world. Causing us to shine with your glory. So that those that are out in the world can see the light and come to us running saying, how do I get this healing? How do I walk with Jesus? Hallelujah. And we have the gospel to tell them, hallelujah, of how Jesus transformed our life. And we walk with them through the prayer of salvation so that their lives can be transformed. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord God. We thank you for how you're going to call us into times of prayer with you. And we're going to answer the call and we're not going to turn back over. We're going to make time for you, Lord God. We thank you for it, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory to your name, Lord God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We thank you for the reading of your word. I want to thank everyone who came on today. I want to thank all those that are watching the replay. I want to thank you all. Hallelujah. For those that are sharing. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for what you're doing in the lives of your people. Thank you, Lord God, that you're igniting a flame in us that cannot be put out. We can't even contain it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. We'll be back tomorrow. Lord willing, reading Mark 5, 6, 7, and 8. Don't forget to hit the share button. Don't forget to come back and join us tomorrow as we read the word of God. And we allow him to ignite a flame in us. Let us be hot for the things of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, dear Father. Hallelujah. Thank you for those that you are sending to hear the word being read. I don't take it for granted. Not everybody may have a Bible in their home. So I thank you for the word being read. I thank you for how the word, hallelujah, is being written on the tables of people's hearts. Glory. And you're, you're, you're strengthening them, Lord God. You're increasing faith as we read the word. Thank you for it, Father. Glory to your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Your people walk in power. The exousia power of the word. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Glory to your name, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Well, I appreciate you all for coming on. I want to say thank you again for my friends from Kuwait City. Thank you again for those from uh, uh, Kenya. Thank you again for those from Nigeria. Thank you again for those from uh, uh, India. And thank you for those from America. God, I thank you for what you're doing. Hallelujah. I thank you. And people are hearing your word and their lives are being transformed. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Some you're planting seed, others you're watering, some you're getting the increase, but it's you, God. Hallelujah. That determines what's going on in each soul. And I thank you for what you're doing in their lives, Lord God. Hallelujah. Thank you. I appreciate each one of you. And I pray that you have a wonderful evening in the rest of the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Lord God. I thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord God, for what you're doing in our lives. We're so ever grateful. We love you, Lord God. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, thank you so much for coming on. And I'll be back tomorrow, Lord willing. I'll see you later. I love you all. Bye-bye.